Hello. Today we are talking about Mycobacterium avium, also known as MAC. This is a gram-positive bacteria. It is the predominant non-tuberculous mycobacterial pathogen found worldwide. There are two subspecies we're going to be focusing on today. One is called MAA, uh, the subspecies is avium, and the other is paratuberculosis, also called MAP. Um, and these are the two that cause the primary health issues, both in humans and animals. One of the interesting and unique characteristics of Mycobacterium is its incredible resiliency. It can grow between 20 to 37 degrees Celsius. It exists in a wide range of pHs, between 4 to 7.5. And it's found in an enormous um, different settings between soil, wastewater, municipal water, aerosols, um, protozoa can be a significant host, uh, different vegetation forms, animals, and in humans. The detection routes can be seen in the figure presented. Uh, for humans, uh, notable ones are oral, aerosol, and from animal byproducts. Uh, detection is incredibly difficult. It's challenging to culture, and there are enormous 12 to 16 week incubation periods. Um, normally, we need some sort of molecular method, such as gene sequencing, so PCR and qPCR are often used. Um, this is found in protozoa. That's a pretty important host in different interactions. Contaminated insects, mesa, the mycobacteria. Animals typically get from the fecal-oral route. Um, and while we're primarily focused on ruminants as a research method, it can also be found in birds, cats, dogs, and a number of other animal species. Uh, humans typically transmit through oral or aerosol, um, but actually for MAA, the avian subspecies, um, an enormous uh, transmission pathway is actually bird excrement as the bacteria can persist in soil and water. To discuss some of the health effects, um, symptoms can be fever, diarrhea, fatigue, anemia, pneumonia. Generally, this manifests in a, some sort of pulmonary infection. Treatment is often a combination of antibiotics, but the two primary ones that are often seen within these co uh, combinations are clarithromycin and azithromycin. And we are lucky enough today to have with us a doctor and a, a farmer. So first we have us today, farmer Lore. Lore has traveled all the way from France to talk about some of the health effects in her industry. Well, <laughs> well, you've got Yoni's disease, which is a contagious, chronic, and usually fatal infection that affects primarily the small intestine and ruminants around the world. Signs are rarely evident until two or more years after the initial infection, which usually occurs shortly after birth. Newborns most often become infected by swallowing small amounts of infected manure from the birthing environment or udder of the mother, but can also be infected in the uterus or by swallowing bacteria passed in milk. A national study of U.S. dairies found that approximately 22% of U.S. dairy farms have at least 10% of the herd infected with Yoni's disease. Thank you so much, Laura, for that comprehensive picture about Yoni's disease and some of the significant health consequences seen in the agricultural sector. So next with us, we have a, a world-leading doctor in the field of Mycobacterium avium. Um, in addition to some of the MAP, the paratuberculosis effects that Laura talked about, um, our subspecies avium and our subspecies paratuberculosis effect have um, been a, an enormous area of in interest recently in the uh, MAC research space. Mm -hmm. And so Rob, if you want to talk to us about some of your research, that would be great, all the way from the UK. Thanks for having me, Kathy. So, um, while invent environmental mycobacteria are opportunistic pathogens in a variety of immunocompromised patients, mm. a wide prevalence um, results in all humans being commonly and continuously exposed at a low level. Only a very small percentage of human mycobacteria interaction progress to outright mycobacterial infection, but it's much more common in immunocompromised patients, especially those with AIDS. The CDC estimates that non-tuberculous mycobacteria diseases, i.e. those that are non-AIDS related, um, occur in 1.8 out of 100,000 individuals per year in the US. Wow. I know. Uh, it's surprising. <laughs> of which approximately 72% are attributable to the M. avium complex, or, or as you say, MAC. It's been estimated that in the US, 25% to 50% of individuals with AIDS will develop NTM diseases primarily attributable to MAC. 
The recent use of highly active antiretroviral therapy in AIDS patients suggests a decrease in the risk and rate of NTM infections in these individuals. Some information suggests also that it could, it could possibly be linked to Crohn's disease, an inflammatory condition of the gastrointestinal tract. Wow, thank you so much, Rob. You're welcome. Due to that enormous prevalence, uh, we can see definitely a significant need for treatment. However, some of the resilience properties discussed earlier make disinfection a little bit more difficult than we would ordinarily see. So for example, MAC is particularly resistant to chlorine. Um, we see 580 to 2300 times greater than for pathogens such as E. coli. It also has a 50-fold greater resistance to ozone treatment than E. coli. And it is one of the rare microorganisms that is both resistant to those sorts of chemical disinfection treatments we've discussed and to UV disinfection. There's some information out there about physical treatment processes such as coagulation, sedimentation, and flocculation, uh, but the jury's still out. More information is needed, and those haven't cohesively been shown to disinfect successfully. Um, an EPA fact sheet even mentioned that there is really little information available regarding the effectiveness of disinfecting treatments on MAC, um, but there is continuous research going into it. And as you can see in the table below, some of the TT99 values surrounding that. Overall, the key takeaways, uh, this is the predominant non-tuberculous mycobacterial pathogen in most regions of the world. This is found an incredible amount of vectors and other pathways from protozoa, insects, animals, and humans. While detection is enormously difficult, we would typically use PCR or qPCR. Um, and the major human health effect takeaway is that this is the most common opportunistic bacterial infection in AIDS patients and typically is causing pulmonary infections. And for disinfection and for environmental engineering treatment, this is a rare microorganism that is highly resistant to chemical and UV disinfection. Thank you for your time and for additional information. You can see these references. And thank you to uh, Dr. Rob thank and Farmer Lore. Thanks, thank Kathy. You, Kathy. Thank, thank you. you.